In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Mother of the Word Incarnate, Saint Joseph, Saints Basil and Gregory, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In these days between the octave of Christmas and Epiphany, the, the liturgy has before us today this first letter of Saint John who is talking about the Antichrist. Who is the liar, he asks. Whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ, whoever denies the Father and the Son, this is the Antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son does not have the Father, but whoever confesses the Son has the Father as well. As we look at our society today and in world, we could say that as Christians were celebrating Christmas, it seems that the world has been celebrating anti-Christmas for a long time, trying to deny Christ, trying to deny his existence, to even kind of doubt his existence. That's not even very historical, even good, um, many times honest atheists will admit that Christ did exist and walked the face of the earth. But today they don't even think it's relevant. They treat Christ as if he is a myth. And this is a sad commentary on our world today. But the church wants us to know that that spirit of the Antichrist is around today. Still, there are many people who are inspired by this, this spirit from below. And St. John was trying to encourage his audience, the listeners of his letter back in the first centuries of Christianity, to not be discouraged, but to recognize that the evil one is very, very active in, in the world. And he just wanted to remind them that um, Christ did come. Christ is uh, uh, the Son of God, and that he himself and the others are the ones who witnessed this and had seen it with their own eyes. And he was reminding them, as we all need to be reminded of the gospel, it's why the church repeats these same mysteries throughout its liturgical years, because we all need to be reminded of these sacred truths. Is what, that what you heard from the beginning remain in you. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made us, eternal life. I write you these things about those who would deceive you. As for you, the anointing that you received from him remains in you, so that you do not need anyone to teach you. He's talking about the anointing that they received at baptism and later on at confirmation, that there's the Holy Spirit there to guide and instruct us and to teach us those things that we possibly can't be instructed in everything, you might say, by a human teacher, because there's so many things that we need to know, and at certain times the Holy Spirit comes to us with knowledge of things that uh, to en enlighten us so that we are able to act in a, in a matter or in a fashion that uh, will help us to remain faithful to Christ and that he wants us to be confident because in the end, the Antichrist and all those who follow him, as he said, will be put to shame by our Lord's coming. And we just need to remain faithful till that day comes. Every age of history has its challenges. Every age, the Christians, those who follow Christ, have to prove that they truly are worthy to be his followers. Prove it by whatever means that um, comes to them. Prove because, well, God tries everyone who is his sons and daughters because he wants to dis discipline them. He wants to find out, do we really love him in fact and not just in word only? This testimony that we give is so important today, that we remain 
even in the simple little things of saying Merry Christmas, so much as Happy Holidays, you know. And whenever I get something that just says Happy Holidays, I say, well, I just, I won't be doing business with them if they can't acknowledge Christ. But, you know, this is where we are today. And so it's the little things that we can do that have great impact. Uh, just because we're not letting the Antichrist and those who would try to deny Christ or to forget him or to uh, replace him with some other false god, uh, you, are already, um, you are already acknowledging him. For it's important that we know who Jesus is, that he is the Son of God. They were coming to John the the Baptist in the gospel today, and they asked him, who are you? Because they recognized that he was doing things that seemed very messianic. And so they wanted to know, are you the one that we are looking for? And he said, no, I am not. And um, finally he told them who he was, that he is the voice crying in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. We could say that this is the, the theme of every Christian today that our vocation, like John the Baptist, uh, we are, in a certain sense, precursors of the second coming of the Lord. We are to be those prophets that our Lord has sent into the world because we have received baptism, and that we are to help uh, make straight the way of the Lord, to help others find him and to point him out to others, as John pointed him out to the Pharisees and those who came to ask him who he was. So today, as we prepare for Epiphany, when uh, we celebrate the great mystery of our Lord manifesting himself to the nations, let us call to mind in these beginning days of this new year that we too, like John the Baptist, are called to point out the way to our brothers and sisters, to be a voice crying in the wilderness, in the wilderness of our society today, in 2014, the, the way of the Lord, and to make it straight for ourselves and to also bring others to that path and to Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.